Now, in the last week's work, we we talked, we 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 did our arithmetic of complex numbers, and we we did multiplication and division of complex numbers using those. But as we said last week, there's going to be easier ways to do multiplication and division. And here here's what we're going to be talking about when we do when we use modulus argument form, addition and subtraction is much easier when it's just in their real and imaginary parts. That was really easy last week, so why, why change something so simple? But multiplication division starts to become much easier when we do it in modulus argument form. So what we, what we can do here is when we multiply um, two complex numbers, so Z1, Z2, multiply it, they've got two complex numbers here, cos alpha, sine alpha there, cos beta and sine beta. So it's got mod Z1's got a modulus of R1 and an uh, argument of alpha. Z2's got a modulus of R2 and a modulus of beta. So when we multiply it across, now I, I haven't written out the full proof. You can go to the text and have a look at the full proof. Um, but basically what we've done is multiply the R1 times R2. That's pretty easy because it's, it's, it's all multiplication. So we're just taking the two numbers, multiply them out the front. But then you get cos alpha times cos beta, cos alpha times I sine beta, and so on. So you're multiplying out those brackets. And you would end up with using, getting some forms of the cos of alpha plus beta and sine of alpha plus beta with those. Um, so have a look at the, the, the text that got the proof. You want the full proof then you're able to you can able to see it there but that's what we get basically it's the effect of we get the cause of the addition of the the, the arguments and i sign the addition of the arguments so again notice that this is going to be written in modulus argument form still it's still there so what we want you to take or take from this as well um the modulus of z1 times z2 is the modulus of the separate ones so if you look at the modulus there, that would be its modulus in that part there. So it's R1, R2, so it's the modulus of the separate ones there. And also that the uh, alpha plus beta is one, is just one value of the argument of Z1, Z2. So that's what we're looking at there. Um, oh, there there's the proof. So you have a look there. You can stop, have a look. It's just the expansion, and we, we get to collect those terms together. Um, and we get to collect those ones together. So... It, that's how it works out. But again, the, the, the proofs here, and the same with the proof, the division, will be in the um, in the text. So you can have a look at those. But dividing it, and let divide the the um, moduli of both of them, and subtract the arguments. So that's how, that's all it needs. And that's where it starts to be much easier when it's in modulus argument form. Rule we're going to use a lot more later on is one we call de Moivre theorem, and basically. This is one where we've got a, mod, a complex number to the power of a number. Again, this is, if it's squared, it's not too hard. Cube is a little bit harder, but basically, once it starts to get larger, it makes life difficult. So, again, this is a much easier way to do this. And what we, the, the idea that we get with the Moivre's theorem, and we'll, again, we'll prove it later on using uh, induction uh, in a few weeks. But the idea is we've, complex numbers are one, Alpha and, and is the, and alpha is the argument. We take our modulus, put it to the power of n, and what we would do is what the effect it would have here is have cos of n times alpha and sine of n times alpha. So the the power there starts to multiply by the argument. So that's the effect it has when you do that, and you could do that with the addition, and you can work that out as well. But that's a really handy rule to have. Makes life a lot easier to, to, to when we're doing multiplication division as well as something to the power, so the repeated multiplication there. So you can see, it's, it's an example of 1 plus i to the power of 10. We could do it using a bin, uh, uh, binomial expansion. It's still going to have 11 terms in there bit nasty which we'd be able to come down it'll come down to real and imaginary terms so we'd be able to collect terms and bring it back down but it makes life easier if we can put right one plus i to the in terms of its modulus argument form so modulus of two argument of pi and four and then use the Moivre theorem to say well hey root two to the power of ten gives two to the power of five uh ten multiplies by the pi and four 
which gives us 5 pi and 2, and then, and then we can work out that, well, cos of 5 pi and 2 would be 0, because it's on the, where, where it is, and then five, sin of i, 5 pi and 2 would be, i, i uh, would be 1, so 1 times the i, that works out to be 32i. So you could, you can expand it out, get all your 11 terms, and leave your coefficients at the front, and work it all out, and you come down to 32i, it's same idea, but it would make life a lot easier using the Moivre's theorem. So some examples here. Here's doing the multiplication division. So four with the uh, modulus of four argument of pi and three. So modulus four argument of pi and six. Multiplication the four multiply, and we add the arguments to give us which is a pi and two. Do the division the fours divide to give us one. Pi and 3 minus pi and 6 gives us pi and 6. Um, so there's some geometrical relationships with this as well. So what happens when we start to multiply a complex number by and an, well we by numbers or by i and with the um, taking the conjugate as we said before, the conjugate of a complex number when we're in the again diagram would be its reflection in the x-axis. Notice what starts what happens when we multiply a complex number by some whole number c, when we when we do that, all it's going to do is just give us an enlargement factor. All it does is move it out. It's going to be on the same argument, but all it does is multiply the, the by the um, modulus. So it just increases the modulus. That's all. It, that's the only effect it, effect it has. And this one, if we look here, and we've I've used an example to do it. Two plus three i. Say it was two plus three i. We multiplied it by i just by i. So what would happen? We get i times two is two i, and three i squared, which gives us minus three plus two i. So what that relates to is that we've taken this uh, number here, ah, uh, this complex number here, the new complex number i z, is going to be the same modulus. It's the same different, same distance because two plus two and the three minus three and two gives us the same distance there. But what happens is that we start to rotate. What all it is is a rotation of ninety degrees anti-clockwise. So we moved in the opposite of clockwise direction. So what happens here is that if we multiply a complex number by i, then what that's going to do is correspond to an anti-clockwise rotation about ninety degrees. So if you see something multiplied by i. That's what's going to happen, and that's, that makes life a lot easier because the distance stays the same. All it does is move it around 90 degrees. So it's the same distance, same line, except perpendicular to this one. So it starts to make life a little and, and interesting when we start to play around and, and do some geometric uh, factors with all this later on um, and able to prove a number of things that are going on there. Um, so if we have a look at doing some questions like that. So 2 plus 3i, if we plot 2 plus 3i, it looks there. And then we've got the z, uh, we've got z, we've got uh, con the conjugate of z, two lots of it will be up there. And then iz, as we said, rotation. And we've got the um, 90 degree angle there. So that there's the effects that those ones have on that there and there's um what we start to talk about with the multiplication by i so we we did again this last week what happens when we start to multiply something by i and the effect that it has so i we have z i z would be at 90 degrees i squared z is just the negative z in the other direction so if that's z negative z would be over this way same along the same uh, line but just in the opposite direction uh, and then multiply by i cubed so it'd be minus i z so opposite of z z down here and then well, i z times i to the power of four would be z again it's back to where it started so we have that effect that's what the, the four complex numbers there start to look like when we start to multiply by i i and, and multiple times we get those uh, get that effect with our geometric relationship so we those, 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 those they will help us later on we want to solve some problems and using complex numbers and prove a number of different
different results, knowing that when you multiply a number by a complex number by i, it rotates anti-clockwise by 90 degrees will help us solve a lot of those problems.